Okay, so just to reiterate what we just did, we broke this code out from the main method into a separate class entirely, and that class has in it a method named print name that we're calling. But in order to call it, if I don't put anything on here, it's not going to work because it can't see that method. It doesn't know where it is. It doesn't belong anywhere in here. It's not a method inside this program.cs class. Instead, it belongs to the print stuff class. And so I either have to, like we did before, leave it as static so we can access the class itself, print stuff dot print name, which is what we did at first, or I was gonna say more commonly, but really it just depends on what your needs are. Um, then this wouldn't be a static method. And we instead would build an instance of the class to be able to print from. So, and I can have instance one, sorry, and I can have instance two. You don't need to have an instance for every time you print. <laughs> It's like buying a, a stapler. Do you need to buy a new stapler every time you want a staple? Obviously not. But my point is you can create two instances of these and they both exist separately in memory. This is PS1. Wow, it's <laughs> terrible. And this is PS2. And so when I call the method, I could call from PS1 or PS2. Now, the only reason that would matter is what if this one has different settings than this one, right? I want to set it up, this has a different font or who knows what um, that, that's going to be passed in. And so we, the point is we can create multiple instances if we need to. We don't need to in this case. But I always think about it in terms of video games. If you're playing whatever video game you're playing, the artificial you know, bad guys in the game are going to each be instances of some template. So go give me an instance of a soldier, or go give me an instance of a boss, or whatever it is. And they're gonna have certain properties. Well, each of them is gonna have certain energy levels, and each of them is gonna have a certain position on the map. And so they're all the same thing, <laughs> um, but they're different instances of that thing. I think about it in terms of the Clone Wars in Star Wars. They take Django Fett and they make a whole bunch of troops from Django Fett, right? And they're not Django Fett, they're instances of Django Fett. And so anyway, that's a whole different thing. But what we're doing here is we've taken the mold and we've created an instance from the mold and now we can access all the same properties that that mold had. All right, so then the last thing I wanted to show you in terms of just uh, different ways of, of doing this is what if we uh, wanted to be able to say hello in different languages, but we needed to know from the user what is the language that uh, we're using for this. And so for me, I speak English, okay. And I speak Portuguese, okay, as it turns out. And so um, I want to be able to tell them hi in Portuguese in case they speak Portuguese. And then obviously any other communication I would want, I would want them to know that, uh, you know, I want them to be in their language. I want it to be in Portuguese. And so I'm going to add in here what we call a constructor. So a constructor is a special method and it actually tried to do it for me when I hit enter there. <laughs> I just did it. So public print stuff. Now it doesn't return anything, so there's no return type. And it can receive stuff in. We'll do that in a second. And then it's got these braces to say, what do we want to do in that case? I like to have my braces go like so. So they line up. It's easier when I'm I actually prefer personally to have them on the end of the line. But when I'm teaching, I like them to line up because it's easier for students to find the braces. Um, Public print stuff. So what do I want to do in, in the print stuff method? What I want to do is determine what language do they speak. And so I am going to have them, when they build a print stuff instance, I am going to require that they pass me a language. So I'm going to put here string language. 
All right, now as soon as I do this and save it, then over on this side, I'm gonna get an error because it says it's requiring you pass in a language, but you never passed in a language. And so this constructor is a special method that is only run once when the program's built the first time. So when we call this name, it automatically calls this method. And in this case, it's requiring I pass in a language. And so I'm just gonna put in a little abbreviation here and I'll say either English or, sorry, EN for English or PT for Portuguese, okay? So that's what what's, it's gonna look like on this end. On the other end, I'm going to receive that into this variable so that I have it. All right, and then what I'm gonna do here is just make a little if statement. If the language is equal to, and in, uh, well, I did not like that at all. Language is equal to. Now in the world of C sharp, we use the double equal sign to say equal to when we're comparing. If we're setting a variable like we did over here, then we use one equal sign. So one equal sign to set, two equal signs to compare. Why? Because that's the way they design the language. So if language equals en, then yes, let's do this. And so we're gonna put this in braces to say, let's do this line if the language is en, okay? But if it's not, let's have a second statement that says if the language is equal to, double equal sign, Portuguese, PT. Then instead, I would want to say system.console.writeline, oi, oi, and then concatenate on to that, the name, and then I'd still have, amazingly, in Portuguese, they still have exclamation points. So I'd say oi. All right, so um, it's not liking that the, the language here. It says it doesn't exist in the current context. And this is a great thing to know because we use this all the time. Stuff is coming into the constructor. This is being set. But the scope of this variable is between this brace and this brace. And so by the time we get here, it doesn't know anything about language. And so a lot of times what we do is we um, take a variable that we're going to set at the, the um, level of the entire class, a string, and I'll call this one language. And then what we do, because now this scope is between this brace and this brace, so everything in the class can see it, including this method and including this method. And then here I'll just set some variable string temp, and then I'll say go set language equal to temp, okay? So I, I get passed in the, the EN or the PT, that's stored temp, just temporarily, and then I take and set what's in the temporary variable equal to the, the language so that this variable is set and this variable can be seen by the whole class. Now I probably don't want this one to be public. I don't want outside classes to come in and access it. And if I don't put anything, it's assuming this is a public variable that it can be set. So I wanna make sure on this to put a private keyword so that it can only be accessed by this class. It's only for internal use. Once I've set this, then as the setting is set up, I have to say what language is it either English. So if I do this and say English, and let's save all, and then run this, then if I say, um, you know, what's your name? And I'll say Spencer. Oi, Spencer. Or, <laughs> hello, Spencer. Good. And then if instead I say Portuguese, and then run this, and I say Spencer, now it's going to say oi Spencer because that what was what is what was set. All right, a couple other things to wrap up and then we'll be done with this set of videos and we'll move on to a little example. Spencer out.